Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this video where we'll be talking about dictionaries in Python. So without much ado, let's dive in. Dictionaries in Python are used to store a collection of key value pairs where each key of the dictionary is, un is unique and immutable while the values, they can be of any data types and they are mutable or changeable. If that sounds too much, don't worry, I'll just make it simple. For, for the past videos, like in lists, tuples, and sets, we have been storing each value by itself. But the dictionary will associate a value to a key. So, example, if I need to store, let's say, some emails of, let's say, workers in a company, I can just call that dictionary emails like that. Then to create a dictionary, use this curly braces, just like in sets. But this one it will be a, if, I, if I print this, this one is an empty dictionary. Don't confuse this to an empty set. We said that an empty set is created using the set constructor. This is how an empty set looks like. But an empty dictionary looks like this. Don't don't confuse those. Okay. So once I create that dictionary, I can put values inside here. The left part is the key and the right part is the value. So I have said that keys have to be unique. So you cannot have more than you cannot have the same key twice. The key is unique. That means it only only can only appear once. So let's say I have a key. Since I'm storing the emails of workers, let me say I have a worker called Dan. That will, that will be the key. Then to separate the key from the value, put a full colon. So I'll put a colon. Then I'll put my email here. Let's say my email is dan at jp.com. That is my email. And if so this is, is the entry of the dictionary. So an, an entry contains a key and a value. And if you want to add another entry, you just put a comma. Then in the next line, you can just put another key and another value. For example, I can just say Mary. Then I put a colon. Then the email for Mary can be Mary at email.com. Okay, so you can add as many values as you want. And to print them is just simple. Just like how we did with lists, you just print email like that. And if I run this code, you'll just see it, the, it will appear the way it, I've defined it. So that's, it just appear the way it is. But keep in mind that this key and this value are separated using this full colon. And they are related. And this also like that. So if you're coming from other language like JavaScript, this one is called this is how you create objects in those languages, but in Python they're called dictionaries. So I believe that's a good introduction, so let's just continue with this series. One thing that I want you to understand is that for this key, you said that keys must be unique. And the other thing is that you have to put uh, the value of key can only be a value that is immutable, something like a string, an integer, or a tuple. Because how dictionaries work behind the scene is that once you put a key, that key is hashed. And that hashing is what determines where this data will be stored. So this key has to be hashed. We can just make, let me just show you something. If I use this, there's a function called hash. This I, I have to bring this because it, it want to show you a point. If I hash the let me hash the string down, and let me print this so that you can see what it shows. Okay, let me just remove this other print. If I try to hash the value done, you can see I'll get a, a huge number there, this huge negative number. So that is how these dictionaries work behind the scene. They hash the keys and store them in hashes. And in those hashes where these values are being stored. I don't want to go into the details, but what I want to show you is that you cannot use mutable variables here. You can just use the immutable like strings, integers, tuples. If I use a tuple, let me also use, I can just show you an example that if I use a tuple, you already talked about tuples, if you don't know about the tuple, you can just visit the, the tuple video. If I use a tuple, something like that, it does not make sense here, but this is just an example of how you can use the keys. And I can give it any value. You said that the the value can be anything. The value has no problem. But the, the problem is with the key. The key has to be something that is immutable. So if I save this and run this code, there is no problem. I can just print, I can just return my print statement here and just print emails you can see this is no there's no problem with that but if i put you can let us just confirm before you can see there's no problem with that but if i put a mutable variable here something like a list to show that lists are 
mutable. So let me just put try and put a list here. You can see what will happen. If I put a mutable, a mutable value like a list and I run this code, there will be a, a problem in that. Dictionary will tell me that an hashable type list has been used. So for for keys, you should only use data types that are immutable. If you use a mutable key, it will prompt an error. So I need to drive that point home first before I proceed with dictionaries. So let me allow me to just remove this and return my code the way it was. So this is the simplest way and the common way in which you create dictionaries. But there's also another way you can create dictionaries using, using the dict constructor. It's here. You can create a dictionary using the dict constructor. Let me just copy this and just show you how that can be. So if I just copy that code there, you can see I used it's used the dict constructor and you pass the key and the value. So here the key is name, the value is Alice, then it, there's another key called age, the value is 30, then the other key called is student and the value is false. So that's another way of creating dictionary using the dict keyword. And if I print person, let me just print person, you see it will just be a dictionary. If I run this code, we will just confirm that it's a dictionary. And you can see indeed I got a dictionary of key name value alice key age value 30 key is student and value false so key value pair that's what that's how we we say it so the other thing is adding dictionary items how to add items inside a dictionary before adding items let's first see how you can access those items in a dictionary so allow me to reuse the one that i had before so to access each item in the dictionary you can use the the key so it's here in the notes use the, this key to access the value of that so if i wanted to get this email here i'll use its key which is done thing that is just simple i'll just say something like emails because email is the name of my dictionary then email has a key of done so i'll just put square bracket then i put my key there done and if i print this let me just print it so that you can see i'll get the value done at jp.com and this is how you get the values of items in a dictionary. You can say get done.jp.com. And if I, if I wanted to get this value for Mary, I'll just change the key here to Mary. And that is how you get, that is how you can access items of a dictionary by referring to their keys. Also, you can use the get method. But this one is the simplest, but you can also use the get method. So you just say dot get. Then you have said a method because, so you put parenthesis, not square brackets now. Then you, you pass the item that you want to get, you pass the the key of that item. So if I say emails.get done, I'll get the email of done. So if I save this code and run it, you'll see just the way we saw before, the email of done will appear in the console. So there are two ways of accessing items in a dictionary. Using this get method or using the square brackets and putting the, the key there. So those are the two main ways of accessing items in a dictionary. When we started, we said that the values of a dictionary are mutable. The keys are not mutable, but the values are mutable. So to change the values of a dictionary it's, is allowed. So that's what we learn next, how to change the value of an item in a dictionary. So for example, I have this key done, whose which value is done.jp.com. And let's say I wanted to change the email of done. I can just do that simple so let me just do that here before i print the email so first i'll have to access that item and i said to access that item you can use there i that's why I, I that's why i insisted on using this square bracket because that's the simplest way so i'll just say emails then i say square brackets then i put the key there done then i'll just give it another value let's say I just i can just instead of done at gmail i can just give it another value let's, let's say done at email.com or i can just say d so that you can see the difference so you can see initially the email of dan was done at jp.com now i have changed it to d at email.com and i've used this syntax i just put the name of the dictionary then i put square bracket then the key then i assign a different value we said that this is the this is the way that you use to get that value so it's just you're just getting that value then you're giving it another other value. I think that is just the way you do it in variables. And if I run this code, 
you can see now the value of done will now be d at gmail.com it has changed and that is how we change the the values of our dictionary another thing is that if i want to add items in this dictionary initially now we have two entries if i wanted to add another entry i just do it in the similar syntax we just say emails then i'll put let's say i want to add an email of fill i'll just say they are fill then i'll just say is equals then i put the the value so this i've added the the key now to add the the value because you have said that it's key value pair so maybe the email of fill can be fill at jp.com and if i now if i print emails you can see initially you had two entries and now i've added fill so if i print this email i should see dan mary and phil you can see now there is dan there is mary and there is phil and that is how you add items to a dictionary so the next thing that you learn is how to remove items from a dictionary to remove items from the dictionary you can use multiple methods and we'll discuss all of them so the first method is this one called the pop method so the pop method removes item with the specified key and returns its value the whole idea of pop is it returns its value so if i need to remove mary from this list i can just say emails dot pop then i put the the key the key is mary and if i run if i run this code i'll just get the emails without mary i'll just get fill and done you can see there's this done and fill mary is not there and we have said that this pop returns the value so if i store this into a variable if i store this to a variable i'll just call that variable removed and if i print that variable you will see that i'll get the value that has been that has been removed so if i run this code i'll get the value mary at email.com because that's the value that has been removed you can see i'll get mary at email.com and this will be this will be my updated dictionary and, and that is not the same with the other method so this pop method is unique because it returns the the value the other way to remove items from the dictionary you can use this this method called the pop item so pop item does not return a value but you can just see it i'll just change this to pop item like that pop item and pop item does not take any argument so i'll just remove this and what this pop item does it removes the last inserted key so in this case the key that has been inserted last is fill so I expect if i say emails that pop fill is done that has been will be removed because fill is done that has been inserted last so if i run this code i'll get done and mary because fill will have been removed and fill is the one that has been inserted last you can see i got done and mary and you can see that pop method gets the whole the whole entry that has been removed not just the the value but the whole entry it gives you the key and the value that pop item method gives you the key and the value and you saw that the pop gives you just the value and the difference with the pop and the pop item is that the pop you have to specify which item you want to remove but for the pop items it removes the last item okay the other thing is this one called the del or you can call it del doesn't matter how you pronounce it but let me just show you how to how to use that so for you to remove an item using the del you just write del then you put the name of your dictionary in this case emails then you provide the key that you want to remove in square brackets so i'll just if i want to remove done i'll just say emails then done so using this line this done will have been removed and this del does not return anything so if I save this code and run it, you'll see done will not be there in the dictionary because I have removed it using the del. You can see that the dictionary contains Mary and Phil. Done is no longer in the dictionaries. And that is the work of the del. And also del can delete the entire dictionary. So if I just say del, then I say emails like that, it will delete the entire dictionary. And if I run this code, you tell me that emails is not there because it has been deleted. You can see it will be an error. It will tell me emails is not defined because i've already deleted emails using this del keyword so del can delete a specific item when you provide the key or it can delete the entire dictionary so that is how del works okay the other method that we will use is this one called the the clear so for the clear it, re it removes all the items in the dictionary so if i just say emails dot clear then i print my dictionary it will be an empty 
dictionary because the clear method removes removes all the items in that dictionary you can see now if i print my dictionary it is an empty dictionary here and that is how you remove items from a dictionary so next we learn about this dictionary methods the keys values items update and copy so let's learn about those the first dictionary method that we look at is this one called the keys so the keys returns a view object containing all the dictionary keys for example if i need to get all the keys of this dictionary email i'll call the keys method so i'll just say here dot keys like that and if i send this to a variable i'll just call that variable keys also and if i print keys you'll see that a view object of all keys will be displayed you can see my keys are dan mary and phil so this keys gets all the keys another thing is one called values so values just gets all the values this one just simple so if i put here values i'll get all the all the values like that so i'll just rename the variable to values and if i run this code i'll get all the values as a view object so if i run this you can see all the values are here and there's this one done mary and phil so those are the two methods that we'll use and there's this one also called items which gives me all the dictionary items in key value pairs so if i just remove these values and put the items it's another method and also if i change this because you said that variables have to make sense that's why i'm changing their names and if i run this code i'll get a key value pair of all the items in that dictionary. you can see dan and dan's email e mary mary's email phil and phil's email so that is how you use the keys values and items methods then there are these other methods that is the update and the copy so for the update it updates the dictionary with elements from other dictionary or any iterable for example let's say i had an another dictionary here for more emails i'll just duplicate this one because i don't write all that again so maybe i can tell this this one are let's say staff email this one maybe says for students and this and staff emails then let's say we have for staff let's say we have john let's say jen maybe the email is just john at jp and this one maybe the, its email is jen so if i wanted to co combine this stuff emails and the other emails i can use this one called update because after the update update the dictionary then and the dictionary from an iterable of key value pairs so if i come down here i say my emails then i say dot update then i update with this other emails called the stuff email stuff and now if i print my uh, my email it will contain emails from both it will contain the original ones and also these other emails so if i save this code and run it you can see there will be a dictionary containing my emails still here fill then you can see now john and jen have been added and that's how you use the update method then there is one called the copy and this is the shallow copy i discussed about shallow copy and the deep copy in the previous i think it was for the lists so you don't know the difference about shallow copy and deep copy you can just use that so this copy creates a shallow copy of that so let me just remove this so if i need to create a, a shallow copy of these emails i can just use the copy method i'll just call uh, let me call it emails copy but you can just call it any name but i prefer my name to be have to have some meaning so if i if i say emails copy then i say emails dot copy i'll create a shallow copy of this email and if i print emails copy you can see it will contain elements that are there in that email but keep in mind these are two different variables i'll not explain about the co shallow copy because i did that in the previous video so you don't if you don't know about the shallow copy and the deep copy you can watch the video on lists i explained shallow copy and deep copy there in detail so yeah that is it with the dictionary methods so the last thing that we'll talk about is this one called the dictionary comprehension so this dictionary comprehension is just similar to the list comprehension that we discussed so i'll just copy this and explain it so allow me to copy that and explain it here so here 
I want to create a dictionary of squares. And I, I'll put my key here, x. Then I'll put this semicolon, and this will be the, the value. So my key will be x, and the value will be x squared. And I'll loop through the numbers 1 and 5. 0 and 5. So for every, for every number, that will be the key. And the value will be that number squared. I think that's just simple. So if I print, if I run this code, you'll see for every x, the first key will be 0. Then 0 squared is 0. So the, the first entry will be 0 and 0. In the second iteration, the value of x will be 1. So it will be 1 and 1 squared is 1. So the next item will be 1 and 1. In the next iteration, the value of x will be 2. So the key will be 2 and the value will be 4 because 2 squared is 4. Like that until 5. So if I run this code, I expect to see a dictionary with keys and value pairs. You can see the, the keys will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 6. And that is how you use the dictionary comprehension. Also, you can use that using, if you have two lists, you can just combine them, as you can see in this, in this example here. If you understood the list comprehensions, the dictionary comprehension is just the same. So, also in dictionary, you can do nesting. And this is the most common way you can see it. So, let me just turn to the emails that I had. So, let me just go one more. I can just go back until I had the staff emails. So, yeah. So, you can see here I have this email. I also have this staff emails. I'm trying to show that you can have nested emails. So, this staff email, I can put them inside this original email. So you can have a dictionary inside another dictionary, but you have to follow the syntax. Say that for the syntax, you have to put a key, then the full colon, then the value. So this key, let me just put it as a string. You can see I'll have the key here as a string, then I'll have the, the value, but I have to put a comma here. Because I've said to separate different values, you have to separate them using commas. So I can have a key, and the value can also be another dictionary, and that is called nesting dictionary so you can have and maybe i can just format this to look good i can just put some space here so that it can look a little bit better so that it can be easy to read but not a must to put that space if you can read it that's fine but i prefer putting this space so that i can read it well so here i have the first key done and the value is here another key mary and the value here then i have a key called staff emails and the value is another dictionary so I have a dictionary inside another dictionary, that one is called dictionary nesting. And if I print this, you can see it will just print fine. Let me just save that and print. You can see it is just fine. And that is how you can have nested dictionary. And to access them, it's just the same. Like, just like they did the 2D lists, you can just access them in the same way. But maybe I can just show you how to access them. Maybe if I wanted to access the email of John, this email, I'll just say emails. Then I'll put my key their staff emails so if i say email staff emails i'll have accessed this object but i can just print to prove that so if i print this i'll access i'll get an object you can see it's an object so in this object you can also use the same syntax to access each individual item so since you know that this is, this is an object you can use other square brackets here like that to, if i did the value of john i'll put here a key of john and now using this syntax, I'll access this value, john at jp.com. And if I run it, you'll see that is exactly what I'll, what I'll get. So you can see to access nested, to access nested dictionary is just like the way it did with nested lists. It's just the same way. Just put two square brackets. And that is it for this video, guys. But before I end, you might ask why, why can you use dictionaries? Dictionaries are highly used because of their speed. They are known for huge speed so even if you have a, a huge dictionary to add data into that, into that dictionary and to remove data is just fast and that's the main advantage of using dictionaries so see you in the next video peace out